Hi guys, we're back again for more Chapter 6 Calculus, um, looking at antiderivatives and integrals. Uh, this is our first look at antiderivatives and integrals in our textbook, of course. So we'll try to keep this at a little bit of a basic level. Um, you probably won't be saying that at the end of this, but um, this is still on the basic side. And fun for this problem, number 12, we're going to be able to use our calculator. So we'll see a lot of those functions over on the next screen. So we're going to consider the velocity function v of t equals t squared cosine of t squared sine of 2t where the position at 0 is equal to 0 0.5. So we're going to use a graphing calculator to do the following. Well the first part's pretty easy. I'm going to take out the calculator here and as you can see I have um, already put the function into y1. So I'm going to go back to the home screen, push clear a couple times because I like a clean workspace, and I'm going to integrate. Now the way to integrate, um, you have a couple of options to get to integral. The first one is alpha window, and then look here, number four is integrate. And the other way to get to that same function would be math, and then look over here, number nine, math nine. I don't know what's going to be faster for you. Maybe it's just me, but Math 9 seems to be faster when I'm uh, calculating. Yeah, Math 9 is probably faster because my fingers are probably going to be closer to Math and 9. Uh, after all of that talk, I don't remember what we're doing anymore. Oh, integral from 0 to 2. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 2, uh, y1, and we can do that with alpha trace y1. Um, dx. Now, I know that this problem says v of t dt, and v of t, of course, has all these t's in it, but your calculator can't do that. It has to turn everything to x, so just make everything in terms of x, and things will be a lot easier for you. So, this is an easy problem. We're just going to do one integral, and we're going to get our answer. So that is 78519. Okay, that was simple enough. How about letter B? Find an integral expression that gives position. So for this one, you have to remember back uh, previously in differential calculus, we found that S prime of t is equal to the velocity. Well, that means that the antiderivative of velocity is equal to position. Or more importantly, um, the integral from a to b of the velocity function dt, that's going to be the position at b minus the position at a. Okay. So keep an eye on this formula right here. It is much more useful in terms of AP calculus than just using a regular antiderivative. That's the formula that we want to keep an eye on over there. All right, so we want an integral expression that gives me t equals 2. Take a look at this. We have t s of 0 is 0 0.5. So I'm going to combine these two statements to create an antiderivative. Okay, in this one over here, I have t equals 0. Over here, I have t equals 2. So the integral from 0 to 2 of vt dt, that's going to be the position at 2 minus the position at 0. Now it says to write an integral expression that gives a position at t equals 2, so I'm going to solve for s2. s2, that's going to be equal to s0 plus that integral from 0 to 2 of vt dt. That's just algebra right there. Okay. So there's my integral expression. You can take this one step further, and you know that s0 is 0 0.5, so we can say 0 0.5 plus the integral from 0 to 2 of the velocity function. 
Note that it doesn't tell you to find what is the position at t equals 2. It just says to write the integral expression. So as long as your expression has that integral, you're good to go. Letter C gives us what we were expected to do. Now we're going to find the position at 2. This completes this uh, letter C completes the problem that we started in letters A and B. So S of 2, I'm just going to copy down that formula that we had in letter B. No big deal, just copying things down. And then now I'm going to substitute with what I have in letter A. In letter A, I found the antiderivative or the integral of VT, and it was equal to that number. So now I'm going to substitute. And finally, well, no, not even finally. That's actually a good enough answer right here, 0 0.5 plus uh, 0 0.785. That is a good enough answer. But I know you guys like to calculate. So when you calculate that, you get yourself 1.28519. That is the position at t equals 2. Letter C, what is the average velocity from 0 to 2? Now, I know you physics people are going to run yourself ragged looking for the correct formula for this. But in calculus, it's an easy matter. The average for anything in calculus, it doesn't matter what it is. That's 1 over b minus a mu multiplied by the integral from a to b of whatever function you're trying to average. So if I'm trying to find the average velocity from 0 to 2, I'm going to substitute b and a with 0 and 2. And the function that I want to find for the average is the velocity function. That's all you need to do. You don't have to memorize any formula in calculus for averages except for 1 over b minus a integral from a to b of f of t. That takes care of every average in calculus. I don't care what it is. That's how you find the average in calculus. And of course, you already know the integral of velocity. But maybe for fun, we should go ahead and do this in our calculator. We're going to do 1 half. Gosh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even go crazier. And I'm going to say 1 over 2 minus 0. I know how ridiculous that is. And then I'm going to copy and paste. And look at that, 39259. Okay. So don't try to drive yourself crazy looking for that perfect formula from your physics notes. It's not worth it. Average velocity is the integral of velocity divided by b minus a. E. At what time does a particle first reach average velocity? Now, believe it or not, this question is the mean value theorem. We want to know when is the velocity equal to 1 over 2 integral from 0 to 2 velocity t dt. At what value t? Well, now all, all we really have to do is put this into our solver and figure this out. Now we have an interval from 0 to 2 and the, we just want to know when the particle first reaches that average velocity. So let's go back to our calculator and um, we will, what's the best way to do this? Um, yeah, let's take this number right here and let's store that as A, A standing for average. The store button is this STO button, which you might have been mystified about. The syntax is the number you want to store, the store button, and then the letter you want to store it at. Solver. We want to know when the velocity is equal to the average. So the left side of that equal sign, if I go to over here, the left side of the, of the equal sign is velocity. 
So I'll put the velocity function here. Uh, velocity was in y1. And down over here, I'm going to put the average velocity, which I solved and I stored in a. So this says, when is y1 equal to a? Okay. Just like I said um, in previous videos, whatever you see there right now is not the correct answer. Okay. Um, well, yeah, let's see, first of all, that value of a, that is the correct a that I want to solve for. 3925. You might want to check that and put the correct number there if you don't, if it's not correct. And we want to pick a number between 1 and 2 to start looking for the solution. Sorry, between 0 and 2. And it's probably not enough to just put, you know, the number right in the middle. If we want to find the first time this happens, we should pick a number closer to the left side of the integral. So we want to find we should find pick a number closer to zero, not so close to two, because we want to know when it first reaches the average velocity. So let's put 0 0.1, and that, that tells the calculator start looking around 0 0.1. Push alpha, enter, and I get 0 0.669. So that is the closest. Uh, solution to 0 0.1 so that must be the first one I mean there's no solution between 0 0.1 and 0 otherwise it would have shown up here so I'm pretty confident this is it 669 so this happens when t equals 669 now that's going to be it for this uh, video for question 12. Some things for you to think about is uh, when you are given a calculator, uh, I'll go back to my work right now. When you're given a calculator, you don't need to show all the steps you did to solve an equation. You just solve the equation. Why would that be? Well, whoever's grading you test knows you have a calculator and they expect you to solve it using your calculator. So why would you get any points for that? Um, we're here, you know, we're, you don't, if you have calculators in front of you, you won't get any points for the algebra. You'll only get correct, you'll only get points for correct answers at that point. So um, good news, bad news, I guess. Uh, no partial credit for algebra, but you get to find the correct answer using your calculator, provided you know how to use your calculator correctly. So uh, practice it, make sure you know how to do it, and we'll see you next time for the last question on the Chapter 6 practice test.